What is going on, Trash Talkers? We're back with another episode for you. Today's video, we're going to give you our predictions for week one of the NFL season. All that and much more coming your way right now. All right, Nick, week one of the NFL season is upon us, and I am so excited. We are finally here. We have a lot of games to get to today, and let's start off with the first and one of the more exciting matchups that we have in week one, the Arizona Cardinals visiting the Tennessee Titans. Now, the Arizona Cardinals made vast improvements this offseason, getting players like J.J. Watt and A.J. Green, really filling out this roster and getting some of the premier talent that the draft had to offer, including Zayvon Collins, to add next to Isaiah Simmons. With all of the additions that they made, Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury understand that they are in a unique position to not only compete for their division, but compete for the NFC. They have so much talent on both sides of the roster that I believe that they are going to be in an incredible position to really challenge the best teams in the NFL. And from what I've seen so far, I think they have exactly that taking a look at kind of where they were last year, they lacked on the defensive side of the ball. That's why they dropped a last second game to the New England Patriots and lost to the New York Jets. They they had to wipe their memory clean of that. Bringing in a guy like J.J. Watt is going to give them a proven winner, and I'm really excited for that. Now on the flip side, we have the Tennessee Titans, who also made some great improvements this offseason. As we all know, bringing in Julio Jones, but on the defensive side of the ball, they brought in Bud Dupree from the Pittsburgh Steelers. They drafted one of the best cornerbacks in the draft, Caleb Farley, a guy who dropped in the draft because of some injury problems, but he's fully healthy and ready to go, and he is the number one corner on this Tennessee Titans team. This offense, running by Derrick Henry, it is going to be an absolute powerhouse. Now with Julio Jones and A.J. Brown as the two wide receiver options for Ryan Tanhill, it's going to be a very explosive offense. On the defense, the edge did get a little bit better with the addition of Bud Dupree. They had Jadavion Clowney last year, but he really didn't do much. Bud Dupree is a proven edge player, and he is going to set that edge for them. Caleb Farley is going to be that mirrored cornerback for them, and Janoris Jenkins at that number two cornerback position. He still has some fire underneath him, and this team is ready to go. Mike Vrabel is ready to get this defense back to where he wants it to be. And I think at the end of the day, the Tennessee Titans have a very well-rounded team. It's just all about how well that pass rush can get to the Arizona Cardinals. As for this matchup, the Arizona Cardinals will be heading to the Tennessee Titans. And I believe that the Tennessee Titans have a lot to prove, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And with the Arizona and with the Arizona Cardinals traveling across the country, I believe that the Titans have an advantage in a 1 o'clock matchup, 1 o'clock Eastern, that is. The Cardinals are not used to this time change, and I believe that the Titans are going to be reared up and ready to go. I believe that Derrick Henry is going to be able to control the ball on the ground, and we'll get to see a little bit of Julio Jones as well. Nonetheless, I have the Tennessee Titans winning this matchup 24-17. Next up, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars visiting the Houston Texans in a divisional matchup. The Jacksonville Jaguars made some interesting moves this offseason, drafting Trevor Lawrence first overall, hiring Urban Meyer to his first NFL coaching experience. And nonetheless, the Jacksonville Jaguars decided to make a plethora of moves with the, the amount of draft capital and cap space that they had at their disposal. They were able to bring in very talented players on both sides of the ball. And when you take a look at this roster, I believe that the Jaguars are primed to do much better than they were last year. I'm excited for what they have to offer. As far as the Houston Texans, they got worse. 
They really got worse. They lost to Sean Watson. That is the key right there. They lost to Sean Watson, but then they lost J.J. Watt, and they lost Will Fuller. A lot of their powerhouse guys are not there this season. They brought in a lot of new guys that Nick Casario, the new general manager, is familiar with, but that does not mean that they're going to be a good team. And under new head coach Dave Coley, I don't think that this team is headed in the right direction. They have not made any splash moves to bring this team up from where they were. And I think that the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to have their number. In fact, I have the Jacksonville Jaguars beating the Houston Texans 24-10 in which Trevor Lawrence sets the tone for his career and proves just why he was the number one overall pick in this year's draft. Next up, we have the Los Angeles Chargers visiting the Washington football team. This is going to be one of those bigger matchups that we talked about. Justin Herbert leading the Chargers in his second season with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams as his wide receivers one and two. He did have a change at the tight end position. Hunter Henry is now in New England and insert Jared Cook, the longtime professional tight end who has done incredible things in New Orleans. And outside with the rest of the league, I believe that the Chargers offense is not going to skip a beat. They are on pace to do even better than they did in Justin Herbert's rookie season. And he set a rookie record for passing yards. I believe that the Chargers are primed for greatness this week. And for the Washington football team, you want to talk about additions. I've got Ryan Fitzpatrick, Curtis Samuel, Adam Humphreys, and that's just on the offensive side of the ball. You've got some big players that they have added, and this team is for real this time. They're not only ready to lead this division, but they're ready to take on the rest of the NFC, and it all starts in this matchup. The Washington football defense is going to be more fierce than ever, and when you look at this offense, they now have the points to keep up with the defense. This is going to be one terrifying team, and I'm really looking forward to see just how good Chase Young is in his second year. As for the outcome of this matchup, I have the Washington football team coming out on top in a very close matchup. I believe that this will be a 28-24 to victory for the Washington football team over the Los Angeles Chargers. Next up, we have the Minnesota Vikings visiting the Cincinnati Bengals, in which I expect to be an absolute onslaught. The Minnesota Vikings got so much better this offseason just by getting healthier. Eric Hendricks, Anthony Barr, Daniil Hunter all got so much healthier and, and are ready to really take the league by storm once again, on top of the fact that they added Patrick Peterson and, and got so much more talent on the back end of this defense. As for the flip side of the coin, Justin Jefferson set the rookie receiving record last year, and I believe that he is ready to topple that. When he got off to a slow start last season, he understands the nuances of the game now. I think he is going to be one of those menaces that we see for a long time to come. I love what the Vikings have. And for the Cincinnati Bengals, they made some nice additions with Jamar Chase being their top pick in this year's draft to go along with guys like Chidobe Awuzie and Trey Hendrickson that they added on the defensive side of the ball. Joe Burrow is back fully and ready to go. He is ready to take on this league just as good as he was last year. And I think with the addition of one of his favorite targets from LSU, he is going to be just as good as he was last year. He may even be better, but in week one, I think that he's got a lot in store for for him with the Minnesota Vikings defense. I think this is going to be a little too much. As I said, Jamar Chase was their option. They could have gone offensive line, but they didn't. I think this edge is going to be a little too much for the Cincinnati Bengals offensive line and the defense. Look, front seven got a lot stronger, but the secondary, can they keep up with Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson? It's going to be very tough and something to watch out for, but I just don't think they have it. And for those reasons, I have the Minnesota Vikings winning this game 24-17, to edging out the Cincinnati Bengals in what's going to be a very exciting game. Next up, we have the New York Jets visiting the Carolina Panthers, where Sam Darnold gets to host his former team. Talking about the New York Jets, they brought in Zach Wilson to be the heir apparent to Sam Darnold in the legacy that he left in New York. And not only that, there was a coaching change might have heard Robert Salah takes over for the New York Jets and it's all gas no breaks with this guy he has the entire team running and this defense reared up and ready to go obviously with some key losses like Carl Lawson after signing him to a big free agent contract the Jets are going to look to replace what they expected out of that position with a committee of other defenders I believe that the Jets made some vast improvements on the offensive side of the ball let's see if Robert Salah can work with the pieces that he has on defense otherwise Otherwise, it'll be another short season for Jets fans. 
for the Carolina Panthers. They made some very significant additions this offseason, none greater than Sam Darnold. Yes, he gets the face off against his old team in week one, and he's ready to prove just how good he is, why he was a top five pick in the NFL draft just a few years ago. In Matt Rule's system, I fully expect him to really excel, especially against the New York Jets, who have a very poor secondary. He has big weapons like Robbie Anderson, who he had in New York. Then he had DJ Moore, and you have Christian McCaffrey, the big running back in that backfield. Sam Darnold's got more weapons than he's ever had before, and he's ready to make the most of them. On the defensive side of the ball, they made some big splashes, adding J.C. Horn, their number one overall selection in this year's draft, to go along with a very strong front seven that they have been curating over the last few years. This is a young and hungry defense, and they are ready to get to work with their very ferocious offense. I think that this is going to be one terrifying team for the New York Jets to face. With Sam Darnold hosting his former team, I believe he is on a path of vengeance, and I believe that the Carolina Panthers are simply the better team. So I have the Panthers winning this matchup in a 28-14 to fashion where Sam Darnold gets to put the pedal to the metal, all gas, no brakes on the New York Jets. Next up, we have quite literally the worst matchup of the of the week, the Philadelphia Eagles visiting the Atlanta Falcons. The Philadelphia Eagles are in scramble mode right now, trying to figure out where this team is, what they are, and how they can identify. I mean, they, they made some interesting selections this offseason, taking Devonta Smith at wide receiver instead of fixing up that offensive line or even going defense on the back end. They have a lot of holes on this roster, and... I don't believe that they made enough moves to really fill them. I believe that the Philadelphia Eagles are going to struggle mightily, but they are playing the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, the Atlanta Falcons, they didn't get much better as they got Kyle Pitts in the draft. But in order to sign Kyle Pitts, they had to trade away Julio Jones, their number one receiver, just to get their rookie class on the roster. Unbelievable how this team was structured, but it's just the hand they were dealt. And with the new regime there, they're hoping to right the ship. But for week one, it's going to be a very interesting matchup. The Atlanta Falcons, they got Kyle Pitts and Calvin Ridley with Mike Davis in the backfield on offense. And then you've got that defense, very young still. You've got guys like A.J. Terrell in the secondary and Foisetti Aluakon in the middle with Deion Jones. You've got some dogs on defense, but they've got a lot to prove still. I do believe that Atlanta does have enough to edge this out, but it's not going to be a very fun game to watch. I believe that the Atlanta Falcons are going to come out on top 14-10. to 10. Next up, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers visiting the Buffalo Bills in which should be one of the most exciting matchups that we have in Week 1. The Pittsburgh Steelers were able to bring back Juju Smith-Schuster on the offensive side of the ball, really get that core of wide receivers back for Big Ben one more time. They did lose Marquise Pouncey in the middle of that offensive line, along with David DeCastro and Alejandro Villanueva. A lot of changes up front, but hopefully for the better, as the offensive line tended to fail toward the latter part of the season last year, and Big Ben, in his older age, needs as much protection as he can possibly get. On the defensive side of the ball, they're dealing with some injuries to TJ Watt, as well as the loss of Bud Dupree. I believe that the Steelers have a lot to make up for in what they aren't currently putting out on the field. It's going to be an interesting matchup going against the Buffalo Bills, but the Steelers still have to prove themselves nonetheless. They absolutely do, and it's going to be very tough to do against the Buffalo Bills, who didn't make many changes this offseason, signing Emmanuel Sanders in the wake of losing John Brown on offense, and then on defense, just their first and second overall pick, you've got Greg Rousseau and Carlos Basham. These guys on the edge are really going to be their edge setters, really going to be the guys that get to the quarterback and really help out the secondary. I think that the Buffalo Bills... Didn't add too much, but they really didn't need to because they are right there and ready to compete. And against the Pittsburgh Steelers, they definitely have the edge. Yeah, I believe so. And the Buffalo Bills will be coming out on top in this one. Uh, it's going to be by a slight margin, and I expect some sort of offensive onslaught for both of these teams. I expect a 31-24 to victory for the Buffalo Bills. Next up, we have the San Francisco 49ers visiting the Detroit Lions. The San Francisco 49ers are in the midst of a quarterback transition with the 
current quarterback still being Jimmy Garoppolo coming back from injury, but you got Trey Lance waiting right in the shadows, and he's not going to be waiting too long. Jimmy Garoppolo is playing on borrowed time, and this is going to be an interesting way to see how Kyle Shanahan handles the quarterback situation moving forward. On defense, they lost players like Richard Sherman and Solomon Thomas, so there is a lot there to be made up. Hopefully, Jason Verrett can stay healthy, but nonetheless, I believe the San Francisco 49ers have a lot to make up for, and it's going to be interesting to see how they can handle all of this controversy. Hey, but listen, the 49ers may have a lot to make up for, but they are facing the Detroit Lions, arguably the worst team in the NFL this week in week one. And when you look at this roster, Jared Goff in his first season with the Detroit Lions under new head coach Dan Campbell, then you add their number one receiver, Tyrell Williams. I mean, this is not going to be a good matchup for the Detroit Lions defense. They did not add many people. They really did not improve at all. Dan Campbell's got to work with really what was there, and that's not much at all. I think that the Detroit Lions have so much work ahead of them, and they are not going to improve at all, especially against the 49ers, who are a playoff-bound team. The 49ers are going to come on top in this matchup easily, 27-14. to Next up, we have the Seattle Seahawks visiting the Indianapolis Colts, and the Seahawks are ripe with talent on the offensive side of the ball. You know who they have. DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Chris Carson. Oh, yeah, and that guy named Russell Wilson under center. I think that they're pretty set there. They have to fix this offensive line. They still haven't done too much of that. They brought in a couple of people, but nothing too noteworthy. And on the defensive side of the ball, they lost a ton of talent on the defensive backfield, really losing every single top corner that they had. And at this point, it's going to be tough to tell who can play cornerback because it seems like they're just trading away corners left and right. Now it's going to be up to Pete Carroll to figure out how he can utilize the players that he currently has on this roster. With, with Bobby Wagner, the lone guy on the, the middle of that defense, he's got to figure out how he can construct this defense to really stop opposing offenses. For the Indianapolis Colts, it's going to be a very exciting season, and it all gets kicked off in week one where we get to see Carson Wentz surprisingly make the start of the season. Very impressive after what we heard early in August. Didn't look like he was going to even play in the first half of the season. Now that they have him, they have Michael Pittman now as their number one receiver. T.Y. Hilton will be out for a very long period of time. But then you have to look at that backfield. Jonathan Taylor, Marlon Mack, and Naeem Hines, three-headed monster that Carson Wentz did not have when he was in Philadelphia. He's back in Frank Reich's system. This is exactly what he's looking for, and he gets to go up, up against a very weak and porous secondary, as you mentioned. For the defensive side of the ball for the Indianapolis Colts, they pretty much retained everybody except for Justin Houston, who they chose not to bring back. And why? Because they added Queedy Pay, the defensive end, out of Michigan in the first round of the draft, who is expected to be one of the best pro-ready NFL defensive ends coming out of the draft. He is going to be very explosive alongside DeForest Buckner. I think that the Colts have a very solid team in their week one matchup. With that being said, I have the Indianapolis Colts coming out on top against the Seattle Seahawks in what should be a very close matchup, 27-24, in favor of Indianapolis. Next up, we have the best game of week one, the Cleveland Browns visiting the Kansas City Chiefs. The Cleveland Browns made so many incredible acquisitions this offseason, bringing on John Johnson III, Troy Hill, Jadavion Clowney, and not to mention all the other draft picks that they brought in, like, uh, I don't know, Jeremiah Usu koromoa Just absolute incredible talent on the defensive side of the ball. On offense, they bring back their very talented offensive line. They bring back a healthy Odell Beckham Jr. and add him to this wide receiving core. Baker Mayfield, yet another year in Kevin Stefanski's system. And at the end of the day, I believe that the Cleveland Browns have made the most improvements in the NFL, and they are the most improved team heading into this season. Well, if you want to talk about strong offensive lines, let's talk about the Kansas City Chiefs because they absolutely overhauled this offensive line this offseason. They got rid of Eric Fisher. They got rid of Mitchell Schwartz. They brought in guys like Mike Remmers, who they've had before, but then you got you look at Joe Tooney and big Orlando Brown at left tackle. These guys are going to help Patrick Mahomes stay upright, and he's going to have more time than ever to work. I think even if the Cleveland Browns have this strong of a defense, they're going to have an extremely tough time 
with a Patrick Mahomes who's calm, cool, and collected in the pocket and can throw to Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey anytime he wants. I think that no matter what the Cleveland Browns can do, this Kansas City offense is still the Kansas City offense. And the defensive side of the ball even got stronger this offseason with this, with the additions of Jerron Reed from the Seattle Seahawks and Nick Bolton in the draft. The front seven has gotten stronger, and that's exactly what this secondary needed to give them a little bit more help. I think that the Kansas City Chiefs have done enough this offseason to continue their win streak against the Cleveland Browns and beat them in this week one matchup 28 to 24. Next up, we have the Denver Broncos visiting the New York Giants at MetLife Stadium. And the Denver Broncos are fresh off a quarterback battle that left Teddy Bridgewater under center. Teddy Bridgewater beating out the incumbent Drew Locke for the starting quarterback position. And at the end of the day, the Denver Broncos have immense talent on the offensive side of the ball with rookie Javante Williams joining Melvin Gordon in the backfield, Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick, Deshaun Hamilton, you name it, they have all of that talent at the wide receiver position. And a little guy by the name of Noah Fant at tight end, yeah, I think you might have heard of him. So the offensive side of the ball for the Denver Broncos solidified. Now on the defensive side of the ball, they get, uh, I don't know, Von Miller back. Von Miller and Bradley Chubb playing together is going to be an incredible thing for this defensive line. On top of the fact that they drafted Patrick Sertan the second and were able to acquire Kyle Fuller from the Chicago Bears, this defensive secondary became an absolute lockdown machine. There's going to be very little that opposing teams can do, and I believe that the Denver Broncos have set themselves up for success moving forward. On the flip side of the ball, the New York Giants under second year head coach Joe Judge have made some massive improvements themselves. You have the number one wide receiver from free agency, Kenny Galladay, now with the New York Giants and rookie wide receiver Kadarius Toney out of Florida. These are going to be some massive weapons for Daniel Jones. But we also have to talk about Saquon Barkley making his return from his torn ACL MCL injury from last year. He is fully healthy and ready to go under this offensive line that brings back Nate Solder. I think that the offense for the Giants is rejuvenated and ready to go. On the defensive side of the ball, they added Aziz Ojolai one of the top defensive ends in the draft to go along with an already stellar defense where they also bring on a Dory Jackson from the Tennessee Titans. The New York Giants have made some massive improvements and are going to put on a really fun game in week one against the Denver Broncos. Yeah, I like what the New York Giants have been able to do this offseason on the offensive side of the ball, but when it's all said and done, I think the Denver Broncos really solidified this defense with all the additions that they made on both the front end and the back end. And at the end of the day, I have the Denver Broncos winning this matchup in what should be a close game. I believe this will be a 21 to 17 victory for the Broncos. Next up, we have the Green Bay Packers versus the New Orleans Saints. The Green Bay Packers finally got some resolve at their quarterback position with Aaron Rodgers coming back for what seems to be his final season with the Packers. And he also brought Devontae Adams, who was also holding out of training camp. Now with Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers with the Green Bay Packers ready for this season, it seems like the Packers are ready to pick up where they left off last year. I believe that the Packers did not make too many additions or subtractions that are going to make or break this team as they have been from the last couple of years. I believe the Green Bay Packers are still primed for success, and I like to see what they can do against the New Orleans Saints. Yeah, I think you're right. The Green Bay Packers are looking pretty scary, and that's why the New Orleans Saints are continuing to make moves. As we just learned, Bradley Roby from the Houston Texans was just traded to the New Orleans Saints to now go alongside Marshawn Lattimore. It's going to be very difficult for the wide receivers of the Green Bay Packers to now stand with the secondary. As we've seen throughout preseason, this Saints defense has not changed too much, and they are still as ferocious as ever. It's all about this offense. Can new quarterback Jameis Winston take full control of this offense with his lackluster weapons that star Marquez Callaway, the second year wide receiver. Alvin Kamara is now only real option at running back for them to work with. They have very few offensive weapons overall, and it's going to be a very tough matchup for the New Orleans Saints this week. That's why I have the Green Bay Packers taking this game on the road against the Saints 30 to 21. Next up, we have our favorite matchup of the week, the Miami Dolphins visiting the New England Patriots, the Alabama Bowl, if you will. The Miami Dolphins 
bring, bring in Tua Tagovailoa, give him the starting quarterback position all to his lonesome. Listen, Brian Flores made a huge mistake last year, continuously bringing in Ryan Fitzpatrick to clean up the mess that Tua was making every single game and letting Ryan Fitzpatrick close out games where Tua was not getting the experience that he needed. I believe now with the moves that they made to acquire Will Fuller and get Jalen Waddell in the draft, this offense is going to be more potent. Tua Tagovailoa has talented receivers that he can rely on. Mike Gesicki is still at tight end, and I believe that Miles Gaskin is going to lead this backfield to greatness. On the defensive side of the ball, Brian Flores knows exactly what he's doing, retaining most of his talent, getting Adam Butler from the New England Patriots and trading defensive tackles, a couple outside linebackers here and there. Overall, I believe that the Miami Dolphins are still primed for success there. I believe Byron Jones and Zayvon Howard are going to be incredible outside lockdown corners. And at the end of the day, the Miami Dolphins have a strong all-around team. For the New England Patriots, they are much improved themselves, adding Mac Jones in the draft and having him as their day one starter over former New England Patriots quarterback Cam Newton. Now with Mac Jones at the helm, this is going to be one dynamic offense, especially with the addition of this two tight end monster, Jonu Smith and Hunter Henry. Now with Mac Jones at the helm, you're going to see this offense open wide open, just like it was under Tom Brady. And I think even more so. Mac Jones is the full package and can do a lot more than what meets the eye. I fully expect this offense to be more dynamic than we've seen in a very long time. And it's going to be very tough for the Miami Dolphins. For the defensive side of the ball, to a better watch out because this front seven is brand new, something he has never seen before. And it stars Matthew Judon and Donta Hightower in the middle of the field with his former teammate Davin Godshaw and Josh Uche up front. This is going to be one terrible front seven for them to face in week one to go along with JC Jackson and Devin McCourty in the secondary. I honestly don't think that this is going to be a very good game for Tua and the Miami Dolphins. Yeah, I don't believe so either. I think the New England Patriots will have their number and you know that Bill Belichick is going to bring the heat against Tua Tagovailoa with no Ryan Fitzpatrick to bail him out. I believe that when it's all said and done, the New England Patriots will come out on top and this is going to be a 28 to 17 victory for the Patriots. For our Sunday night football matchup, we have the Chicago Bears visiting the Los Angeles Rams. The Chicago Bears had what seemed to be a quarterback battle brewing in camp, but but Matt Nagy put the stamp on that one as he named Andy Dalton the starting quarterback before he even got to see Justin Fields throw the ball. And he doubled down on that fact, saying that Andy Dalton was going to start the season and he would reevaluate as the season progressed. Now with Andy Dalton under center, some key losses along this offensive line and at the wide receiver position. I believe that Darnell Mooney and Allen Robinson are going to have to lead this team to victory with Andy Dalton under center. On the defensive side of the ball, the loss of Kyle Fuller is going to be great for this defense. You have Khalil Mack, you still have Akeem Hicks, and you still have Roquan Smith. But outside of those guys, there is a lacking on the back end of this defense, and I think the Chicago Bears are going to be schooled on what a cornerback really can do for this defense. You want to talk about additions, talk about this Rams team. Matthew Stafford, Deshaun Jackson, Sony Michelle, that's just on the offensive side of the ball in Sean McVay's system. On the defensive side of the ball, it's not so pretty. With the loss of John Johnson and Troy Hill, it's going to be very interesting to see how this defense is able to stay the number one defense in the league if they can. But they're going to have a very nice time as they face the Chicago Bears, who have so many holes and are run by Matt Nagy, who is one of the worst coaches in the NFL right now. I think that Sean McVay and the Los Angeles Rams are going to absolutely steamroll the Chicago Bears in this matchup. I have the Los Angeles Rams coming out on top 21 to 6. And finally, for our Monday night week one matchup, we have the Baltimore Ravens visiting the Las Vegas Raiders. And at this point, you know what the deal is. Lamar Jackson, is he a great quarterback? Is he just an athlete? Only time can tell. But they did make some key additions on this offense to really showcase that skill set. Adding players like Sammy Watkins, Rashad Bateman, and Tylen Wallace to go along with Marquise Hollywood Brown. 
and Mark Andrews at the tight end position. I believe that this offense was destined for greatness, although they did lose J.K. Dobbins to a torn ACL, and now being replaced by Gus Edwards or possibly Le'Veon Bell, who they just recently signed to their practice squad. I believe that the Baltimore Ravens are gearing up for what should be one of their better seasons in recent years. On the defensive side of the ball, they did lose Pernell McPhee, Yannick Ngakwe, Matthew Judon, and, and they honestly didn't have an answer for all of that. So at the end of the day, the pass rush for this defense really is going to be lacking, but they still have the cornerbacks to lock up any wide receiver trio or even quad if you really wanted to go that far. So I believe that the Baltimore Ravens are going to be just fine this year, but they're going to have to manufacture more pressure against quarterbacks than they had to in the past. The Baltimore Ravens have their work cut out for them as they face the Las Vegas Raiders, who have had some nice additions this offseason as well. On the offensive side of the ball, adding Kenyon Drake as the one-two punch with Josh Jacobs. Then you have Henry Ruggs and Brian Edwards, two guys who didn't see much playing time last year, but they are the focal point to go along with Darren Waller this season. This offense is going to have a lot of explosive talent to work with, and they're going to be putting up a lot of points. On the defensive side of the ball, this is where things get a little bit crazy. They added Solomon Thomas on the defensive line. They added Yannick Ngakwe on the edge. And they added Trayvon Merrig, the number one safety in the draft, in their secondary. This is one overhaul defense and something that Mike Mayock, the general manager, has been doing for the last few years. It has finally come to fruition. And we're going to see just how powerful this defense is against one of the most athletic players in the NFL, Lamar Jackson. This is going to be one extremely exciting Monday night football game to watch. With Yannick Ngakwe looking to exact some revenge against his former team, I believe that the Baltimore Ravens are going to have to stay away from him if they want to win, and I believe that they will. I believe the Baltimore Ravens are just a more talented team than the Las Vegas Raiders currently are, and with the way this team is structured, I believe that they have what it takes to beat most teams in the NFL. That being said, the Baltimore Ravens will come out on top in this one, 28-17. to all right, well, that is all of your week one matchups. Let us know in the comments down below if you agree with our picks, which picks you don't agree with, and I want to hear from the trash talkers. Let us know in the comments. All right, well, that's going to be all for now. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. We go live every single day. That'll be all. Peace and love.